camels that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him out of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king which he had not told her. My point in getting that is because this is what, you know, uh, a true reputation of fame looks like, man. Right. All right, you cannot have, you know, uh, the proper fame and reputation, all right, like the priest going into without Yahweh Bashmah Shah being attached to it. And then we're behind enemy lines. You're a prisoner of war, Jake. Mm. You're paying taxes. You're on child support. You're drinking fluoridic water without your control. You got to go to these grocery stores. All right. Okay, you, say for you do buy you a Porsche. Well, guess what? First, you got to pay taxes on it. And even, and guess what? Esau can take that from you anytime he feels like it. Even if that thing is paid off, right? In the, in the, uh, in the FEMA, right? Um, uh, in their uh, executive orders, whenever a, uh, a state of national uh, crisis is, is declared, well, all, all personal vehicles become the governments at that point, man. So here, we don't have nothing, man. The only thing we have, once again, is this treasure inside of earthen vessels, man. And the Lord's going to get his men fame on this side. While Jake is trying to get famous in captivity, the true fame is going to come unto the prophets that have been standing stiffly for the Lord, man. Right. And I got, and that's yep. spoken of what, Zechariah? I got it right oh, here. Okay, yeah, you got it. Yep, yep. this is Zephaniah 3 and 19. Yep, yep. Let me read it for you. Okay, come. This is uh, Zephaniah 3 and 19. 3 and 18. All right. You want to read? No, you got it. I got one. 3 and 18, it reads, I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly. Right, and who's that that the Lord is gathering? He's gathering the elect, man. Yep. All right, because this is that solemn assembly. All right, we're being gathered together by the word. And see, Jake is in the spirit of mirth, the spirit of partying, eating, drinking, giving it to marriage. All right, planting, buying, selling. All right, they're not sorrowful, man. You see, the Lord, is, this is a solemn assembly, man. This ain't, we're not, we're not over here to play with you people, man. All right, we are, we over here to get the hell up out of here. This is why this is why the decree was put upon our right, uh, us men a great millstone by our heads earlier this week. All right, brothers, put up curses upon this place, man. Yeah. You see, that's the spirit Jake should be in, man. But see, all these niggas they, they got this this condition called Stockholm syndrome, man. They've been institutionalized. Esau beat any type of sense of of, of nationality or of pride out of them, man. Dignity. Dignity, man. Self-respect. Jake ain't got no self-respect. That's why he'll get behind a desk and, and you know, do yeah. all types of vile things unto this devil just to get a little crumb, man. That's why uh, the, the red one, the, the, the sexy red one. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Thing, yeah. thing one. She'll, she'll go to elementary <laughs> school and, and shake her ass, shake her, shake her yeast coochie all around a <laughs> gymnasium full of little kids knowing that she's cluttering the minds of little girls. She's okay with doing something like that. Cause she has no self-respect she has no dignity no standard that she lives by yeah. so she's willing to be exhibit self-destructive behavior because she doesn't have this order her life isn't attached to the way of the lord so her fame is bad fame yeah. she's famous for being a whore yeah. you understand go ahead and so that's why scripture says to take take good heed unto your name because your name goes before your actual physical presence man yeah. You know, like, you know, you, you may, uh, because your name lives after you die. You know, somebody may bring your name. We, we all have had experiences with particular, you know, individuals, you know, like that we may not have the best experience with. And as soon as you may mention their name, somebody may mention their name, you just kind of cringe. You know, so that goes to show you the power of somebody's name and reputation. Because or, that goes before. Yeah, you or got, yeah. you can say somebody's name and it, it can strike fear in a person. Mm -hmm. Like the Lord's name after Egypt. You know? So a, a, a name comes with a spirit. You understand, like uh, like the priest is going into. Proverbs 21, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Proverbs 22 and one. And once again, who wrote Proverbs? Solomon. And he knows about this, man. Proverbs 22 and one, a good name is rather to be chosen Man, great riches. So that's what Jake should be uh, seeking after, man. Is a good name, right? Coming from Yahweh Bashmal Shah, having a reputation in the heavens, not having a good name on this side. All right, you know Jake want to be promoted on his job, get a good name, get a good reputation. But once again, all right, in order to have a come up on this side, you got to be a dick, man. You got to, you got to be uh, committed to wickedness. Satanist. Satan. You got to be a Satanist, man. A good name is rather to be chosen. Than great riches, than great man. man. Wrap your mind around that. Great riches, not just riches, but great riches. Not a, not a portion of the condo. Yeah, that's not great. Riches. Yeah, 
And so this is why you see the the, uh, the spirit, you know, is upon our apostles, our bishops, our elders, and us acumen, Lord willing, it stays upon us to do what? All right, to, uh, to, to, to do the work of the Lord. Because believe it or not, all right, this is what's building us a great name, right? Because what man in his right mind doesn't want a good name? What man in his right mind doesn't want to be famous? Like that just, the Lord built every man all right, with that desire to want to be famous, but there's a particular way you got to go about it, man. And this is the way you go about it. You got to, well, what's that? He, oh, yeah. he, he put it in us to want to be appreciated. And in this world, the, the foreseeable way for a little child, is, well, people that are on TV, people that have recognition, these are the people that are appreciating the world, so I want that. Back in the ancient world, I don't, you know, it was particular soldiers and warriors that wanted that fame of being a great warrior, but men were more concerned with having substance so they could provide for their family, so they could be a safe haven to their families. But that's not even a priority in this society. In this society, oh, again, it's, 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 it's money. It's, it's the shiny stuff. Yep. All right. The shit that torn it real quick. Proverbs 22 and 1, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. <laughs> Man, what does that mean? The rich and the poor meet together. Right. At the end of the day, everybody gonna be laying six feet uh, in the ground, man. All spirits returning to the Father. Yep. Yep. The righteous and the wicked. <laughs> all right. Nobody, ain't nobody burning hell. All right. Everybody goes back to the grave. Right. Your spirit goes back to the spirit world. You see. And a lot of people have sold. Like Yahweh Shah said in Mark the eighth chapter. All right, what does it uh, gain a man if he if he uh, gain the world and lose lose his soul, man? Yeah. Would you would you would you, would you rather be a man of the Lord teaching on the highways and byways, or have that reputation, or RuPaul's right. reputation? You see what I'm saying? That's true. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, he, he he's noted, he gets he gets notoriety. He has access to particular things. All right, but is that what you really want? Yeah. Or do you want your your, your reputation and what you stood for to be? Squeaky clean. Yeah, that makes sense. I'd rather get the money and wisdom rather than having money and no wisdom. Yeah. You know, we don't get all at that. The end of the day. You got all this money with no wisdom. You just a, a, the guy that's on the ground landing a, a, a bump. Yeah. You ain't got no sense, man. Because you have to understand, you have been chasing riches. It is the Lord that make you watch this. First Samuel 2 and 7. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and, and lifteth up. So at the end of the day, it all goes back to the reason why bums are bums because the Lord put them there. He put them in that situation. You see? They said, he raises up the poor out of the dust. Remember you said something, Moses? He gave Moses the, uh, he was ruling over like a... Moses was second. Uh, he was up for contention of being Pharaoh. He had access to everything in his society. Right. He was over infrastructure, how society moved and ran. You could tie it with that. He raises up the poor out of the dust. You see? He took Moses from being an a, a immigrant baby Swat him in the get up in the yep, cloth and took him to the top. The less, that's the Lord's call. David. David, David. same thing. Mm -hmm. Joseph, same thing. So what's up? Yep. I'm Daniel yep. in the Babylonian captivity. Yep. Same thing. What about Adam? Same. Before Adam had the breath. Yeah. He was, thing. you know. Man. <laughs> but until Adam got the breath, the Lord, you know, was supping with him, told him, okay, do this, do that. All right, you have the meaning over all the works, my, you know? Yeah, he became ruler in Eden. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> Come on, man. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. And he has set them, up, and he has set the world upon them. So if you got a power that set the world upon pillars, then you'll be trying to chase them. I don't have a clue, man. Like the brother said, Rather chasing your how about your side and riches versus just chasing the world is the better thing that's happened to any Israelite, man. Yeah. You're gonna have a fame behind what you're doing right now. All the riches and everything gonna come after that, man. Yeah. And also when you get, you know, that fame and reputation, all right, that's uh that's uh noticed by your how about your shot, all right, well that cannot be tainted. But when you get fame and reputation on this side, it'll be tainted. Prime example, look at Bill Cosby. <laughs> you know, he was once known as America's father, America's dad, man. You know, having, he a fan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, freaky ass nigga. Yep. You know what I mean? <laughs> he was once famous, you know, for, for his good, you know, acting skills, you know, yeah. his, you know, making people laugh. But now he's famous for for, for a devious thing. For, for roofing. Right. Yeah. And you know what? It, it could be that could be a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? That could be a lot. He's not gonna add it to where it, shit. You know? Yep. But at the same time, 
it, him be, I guarantee you that it will fuck with all of us. But Bill Cosby was invested in this world. Yo, oh yeah, yeah. He, 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 that happened to him because he ruffled feathers in a way, you know, that shouldn't have been ruffled. Yeah. He's trying to, oh, I'm going to change the black male image here in, in Babylon the Great. I want to buy Sony. You know what I mean? I, was it Sony or PBS? What, what? It was a, uh, shit, one of them yes. damn, uh, no, no, it was, it was uh, no. shit, on CNN. It was one of them damn one of, these, one of these companies. Yeah, one of the big companies. Now, he, he's, he's suffering that persecution, <laughs> not for Yahweh Shah, not for Yahweh Bashimi, but for his own will. The persecution we're going to suffer is for righteousness sake. No. Or, when it comes down to it, when they try to defame us, it's gonna be attached to standing stiffly for y'all by Shem Yom Shah. And the Lord's gonna turn that defaming into fame, into renown. So, you know, he, he's not gonna get any reward for doing what he was trying to do, you see? And, and the Lord's kind of showing us glimpses of that right now. Like these particular, uh, you know, Christians and, yeah. you know, uh, trying to defame us. You know, y'all are, y'all are, uh, uh, you know, tea, domestic tigris or y'all are, you know, grapists or whatnot. But really what they're doing, now the whole world is looking, looking up Great Millstone. Well, dang, everybody's talking bad about Great Millstone. Let me look this up. So what is that doing? That's, that's getting the Lord's men fame. Now, they think that the, the enemies of the gospel, they think that they're doing this, you know, you know, for, uh, to pretty much like, you know, have us down on the bottom. You know, but really the Lord is going to turn it all for the good, man. You can do nothing against the truth before the truth. I got you. It's 2 Corinthians 13, <laughs> 13 and 8. Well, we can do nothing against the truth before the truth. So that slander that they're trying to put out there is going to cause people to inquire of the Lord. We're going back to our first point. If your fame is attached to the Lord, it's good because it forces people to inquire of, the, of our power. So because when they look that up, they say, do these guys really teach that you could just great women? And, are they promoting that? They're going to go look up the videos. They're going to see brothers' videos and say, hey, this is how the Lord says to deal with it. Okay? And this is how we deal with it now. Which one is better? Because what y'all do, y'all throw the guy in jail, the person's traumatized, and might even repeat the cycle. What the Lord does is the man is put under that, 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 that judgment to be accountable for what he did. And what comes out of it? A family comes out of it. The Lord takes this, this situation that's a traumatizing event and still brings life from it. Because life comes from established families. So the Lord can take something that is seemingly dark and make life come from it. This is how they deal with it in the world. This is how the kingdom of heaven is gonna, you know, deal with things when they happen. So then the people that inquire and they see that they're gonna be like, damn, these guys are, that's right. That makes sense. That is a better way to deal with it. Let me, let me, let me see more. What do they say about this? What do they say about that? And then slowly but surely, a member of the elect is woken up. So that slander that they're trying to put out there, again, you can do nothing against the truth before. Yeah, you read the book of Acts, man. You know, you have particular, you know, vagabond Jews and, you know, uh, men of lower, baser sort, you know, pretty much trying to uh, come up against Paul, all right, and the apostles. And they were, you know, debating, you know, uh, debating. They had a lot of heated debates. But you had a lot of audiences to gather into them, like, I man, let me hear this out. And I you had a lot it. of people get converted, man. <laughs> you know? I got you. Yeah, watch this. This is uh, Titus 1 and 9 in the NLT. Okay, I'm reading GNT, I'm GNT. First Titus 1 and 9 in the KJV. Hold it fast the faithful word as he had been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gangsters. In NLT, he must have a strong belief and trustworthy message he was taught. Then he would be able to encourage others with wholesome teaching and show those who oppress it where they are wrong. Man, yeah, because scripture says in the book of Isaiah, the 29th chapter, even he that, that uh, that uh, you know, was scoffing against, I'm gonna get it real yeah, quick. Uh, yep. This is Isaiah, Isaiah. chapter uh, 29. You know, because a lot of people that be coming on the common board scoffing, yeah, a lot of them, they are, you know, pretty much typing up their judgment, but some of them, they gonna repent. Some of them, the Lord's gonna, you know, have mercy upon. All right, this is Isaiah 29 and verse uh, 20. It says, for the terrible one is brought to naught, talking about Esau, Edom, the house he being brought to naught, all right, by, the, by this truth, man. 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. It says, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. And here's the point, verse 21. That make a man 
Salaki, is this what I want? Uh, you know how it go? Yeah, let's see. I think. I make a man finna. Okay, last verse. Oh, okay. Isaiah 29 and 24. They also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding, and they that murmured shall learn doctrine. And that goes back to what you was talking about, uh, priest, uh, elder, you know, in Titus, the first chapter. You know, how uh, to convince the gainsayers. You know, because not, not every scoffer, right, is a two-third. You do have some scoffers, they're just, you know, they just, and they folly right now, the Lord just ain't dealing with them right now. Oh. Yep, it, beautiful, <laughs> prime example, Paul. Paul hey, Paul himself. Biggest scoffer. Yeah, Man. Paul himself said, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm the chief of sinners. I shouldn't even be called an apostle. I was persecuting the church, yep. you know. I was killing you niggas. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man. Nobody said. You're basically. Yeah, I was. I was willing to put y'all to death. I was so against what, what's being taught, but the Lord tur turned me around. You understand? So nobody can sit here and say, you know, oh, you can't. You know, no. If the Lord chooses a person, anybody can be chosen. Yeah. So it's really again. That's another example of it being up to the Lord who even gets to understand it. Yeah. You know. And that's why you're supposed to fear your house by Shemal Shah. Because you had some people, they received the word with joy. Like it says in Mark the fourth chapter, the parable of the sower, the sower seed. You had some people, they don't scoff. As soon as they hear the word, they're like, oh yeah, shalom, shalom, la. You know, they put on their fringes, you know, eat lamb. But yet, the Lord ain't choosing, man. You know, on the contrary, why is you have particular men of this sort that may have murmured, may have scoffed, but the Lord's like, all right, let me, let me get that, you know, let me get that folly out of them, man, and really show them the truth, suck with them. And because some of us, you know, Hey, some you know, some of us, you know, we just didn't, you know, just come into this thing that easily. I could speak to myself, you know, I could, you know, speaking first and foremost, like myself, right? Like I heard this truth a few times before the Lord really knocked me over my head, man. Like now nah, you, yeah, the ass, you know, the ass whooping gotta come. <laughs> yeah. Even Anton, the Lord might drop it, take everything from that nigga, yeah. and he might actually seriously come inquire. Yeah. I doubt it. Yeah. I but I'm not the Lord. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the Lord, the you know, Lord knock him, because that's how you come into the truth. Look at Paul. The Lord took his sight from him. Man. man. And front, him and his partners, that was real. They he didn't take his sight from their partners, but yeah, yeah. He, 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 he knocked Paul on his ass, took his sight, and shook up his partner. They're like, what the fuck going on? <laughs> yeah. So a lot of times, you just got to get your ass whooped. You, you, before you, straight, you, you know how you whoop a nigga ass back in the day when you were in school or something? Yeah. And then y'all become friends? Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes a nigga just need his ass whooped <laughs> yeah. before he come to his sisters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Real <laughs> talk. See, just like when you a badass kid, your parents got somebody got to whoop your ass. Yeah. And you come to your senses. Same with the Lord. I got one. Yeah. Oh, you had something? No, no, no. Psalms 119 and 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Yeah, you, got, you, see, you know your grandpa said, I'm about to knock some sense in your ass. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, be knocking sense in the niggas, man. We all needed a little sense knocking into us. Yeah, even still sometimes. You get caught up in giving your time to stuff that you like, oh, why am I giving so much time to this? Sometimes, the Lord, you know, he still got to knock a little sense into it. Yep, yep. That's the purpose of these trials and tribulations, to keep us sober, man. You got these dreads hanging out the back of his head. Oh, boy. See, I want you to see this long hair. Nigga like the predator. All I was like thinking niggas with dreads, all I think about is niggas doing this with their dreads, when they swing it back over their shoulder. I don't care how hard a nigga look. When he do this shit, no. Oh, it's over. It's over. Yeah. I'm sorry, Shalaki. That's Jake, man. Yeah. So called Negroes, like, you know, they're very they, want, they want the women to appreciate it. Right. You want to be accepted, man. Yeah. You want to be accepted and glorified, but you ain't doing nothing pertaining to the work of the Lord. Man. Well, on your uh, wine downtown, bumping loud gangsta future music. <laughs> That's future. And swinging your hell over your shoulder for some women. You know, beer belly all up on your motorcycle. Man, you know, yeah. On the gas tank and yeah. shit. Awful, awful women <laughs> who damn sure ain't concerned about the things of the Lord. Yeah, no, who damn sure ain't gonna be a safe haven when destruction no. comes to this place. Yeah, because Jake looks looks unto Eve, he looks unto the woman for a safe haven on this side right now. You know what I mean? Like that's why Jake, you know, they, they love to you know shack up and live with these women. What? Jake ain't got nothing in his name. Everything is in his woman's name. You driving your woman's car, got the got the little fluffy, you know, uh, uh steering wheel cover, yeah. you know, a little pink flag. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, trying to act all hard. And, and a Honda, you. nigga, you pull up, yeah. nigga, your, your lights got eyelashes on them, nigga. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Stop. Yeah. But that's all they know, because yeah. what? They grew up without their father in the home. The only structure they ever seen was a woman, a woman running shit. That's a, it. So when they get older, they look for that same thing. 
And then when they run across brothers that are, that are, that are being men, they say, hey, no, this is what we do. It's so foreign to them that they think it must be bad. Right. Yep. When they don't understand, in order for you to get this truth, what? You got to come up under a masculine energy and be able to receive the instruction. That's this whole thing, man. That's why feminine niggas can't come up and even get down with this. Yeah. Because it takes too much self-control, which they never got from their mama. It takes too much self-control, foresight, being able to be still. A woman right. just can't be still when shit ain't going bad, when shit ain't going right her way. She got to do, you know what I mean? She'll jump through hoops for some comfort. But the Lord, a lot of times, he wants you to sit in that discomfort. Right. Because there's lessons there. There's wisdom yep. in discomfort. There's lessons and losses, as the brother did. Yep. yep. Man. Come on, come on. As you was just going into, you know, Jake being emasculated, right? Uh, you're when you're emasculated and you're operating a feminine energy, the Lord cannot and will not use you. This is Deuteronomy 23 uh, from the top. Um, now, the title, I like the blue letters title on here. It says, Persons Excluded from the Assembly and Regulations Concerning Worship. Now, it tells you, all right, who can and cannot worship the Lord. Deuteronomy 23 and 1 in the NLT. If a man's testicles are crushed or his penis is cut off, he may not be admitted to the assembly of the Lord. You know? So, you know, extrapolate that spiritually. Right? If you if you if your woman got her got your nuts, right, in, in her purse, you know, like they say in the world, you know, that's why scripture says, gird up thyself like a uh, gird up your loins like a man. I demand of you an answer, man. If you if you soft, you effeminate, right, you ain't got no balls, man, you know. That's what this is. This is yeah. a testimony, you know. Goes yep. back to test these, yep. you know, holding up your nutsack. If you ain't got no balls, the Lord ain't gonna use you, man. They have a test so, so if you operating, you know, under the vibration of your mama, all right, your uh, your girl, all right, your auntie, that, that baby boy scene. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, he grabbed, he grabbed, he, uh, he grabbed man, Jody from the couch. Jody, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, get your call from your mama. Man. <laughs> Jody was in that that that, that mama boy spirit, yeah. man. Still trying to. No, nah, mama, you don't need no man. All you need is me, that no. son husband spirit. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. He was in that son husband spirit, man. Nigga, go be with your woman. Right on. The two shall become one flesh. Yes. They man. shall leave, you shall leave your mama and your daddy, you know, and you and your woman. Now on this side, we know, you know, most of us we ain't had the opportunity. I know I haven't had the opportunity yeah. to be with a virgin. So I'll, you know, yeah. more likely never know that. Yeah. You know, until but go, the word of come. Get, but, get your shit together. Yeah. yeah. He's spending time with, uh, what's his partner name? What was his partner name in the movie? Shit. Uh, the nigga, the light skinned nigga, man. With the jumpsuit. Anyway, you jump. spent, he, well, he should have went and just got a regular job, got his own spot. Oh, uh, and, yeah. A Cuba Gunn Jr. brother. I forget yeah, his yeah, name. I forget his name. You, you seen yeah, the movie. Yeah. It's, it's, on the, it's running on BT right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I <know laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. But yeah, that's the spirit that a lot of Jake in, man. Yeah. Because they didn't see that example of a masculine figure in their life. And when you come into the truth, it's straight masculinity. It's, yeah, hey, this is yeah. what we're doing. We're going to do this. If you step out of line, you know what it is. It's a patriarchy. Yeah. It's, that's what it is. And right? as you, it's like you got. My nigga. I was going to say, as you was mentioning Anton Daniels earlier, bro, man, you just listen to that nigga just for like a split second. You ain't even got to listen to like a full two minutes of him. He's a bro, nigga you can tell he, he has a very heavy feminine vibration, man. You know, he, he put extra emphasis on his S's, you know, and then just the shit that he be talking about, man. Like, you broke, broke. You know, only only a nigga woman Women, would yeah. use, He's you know, sassy. yeah, <laughs> only a nigga woman would, would repeat adjectives. Sassy. Broke, broke. You know, I'm exactly. rich, rich. You know, <laughs> he got that Tyler Perry spirit on. Yeah, that's that's that, that came from uh, Detroit. The Detroit women, they would repeat they uh. Oh girl, he got oh he got red, red. He got money, money. Yeah. Boy, boy. You know what I mean? Stop. I wouldn't be surprised if he said period at the end of his sentence. Oh, I'm sure he does. <laughs> That shit, when I hear a woman say period, bro, that shit just make me my stomach turn. It's like, oh, damn, bitch. <laughs> Shut your ass up. <laughs> I can't stand that. God damn. Hey, and that's, that's why we waiting for the kingdom, man. That's why, all right, we cannot wait until your Howard Shot comes back. All right, because he's about to set up a righteous regime. And he says the former should not be remembered. That includes all this stupid ass Ebonics, too, man. Yeah. Like we just talking about, uh, period, you know. Uh, you know, what's, what's another one they use? You know. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, you know, all this stupid stuff, man. You know, well, like, you know, but I, I, I say this Jake, Jake always gonna add flavor to whatever language they speak, but yep. we're, we're more so diving into 
the terms that the nigga woman uses. Okay? Because she she <laughs> she is completely void of faith. She is completely against uh, the, the, the establishment of the Lord, his program. Us trying to operate the way the Lord told us to operate in the earth completely rubs her the wrong way. So when you see a man moving in that same spirit, a lover of the most high, that's gonna turn him off. It's gonna make him look at that guy like, what the hell are you doing? Okay? Because the, the nigga woman in this society, she has a malicious spirit towards the Israelite man. Absolutely. And the scriptures say, wisdom will not dwell in a malicious soul. So we know a person that's moving in that nigga woman's spirit is void of wisdom, which is knowledge and understanding how to apply it in life. Right. You see? Yep. That's why I should get to it real quick. First Corinthians 7 and 31, and they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passing away. All that drip, drip, and all that talk y'all talking, how you acting, just uh, what, clapping when you the talk. Clapping, uh, sports. Watch the oh, video, that nigga was clapping that? when you talk. See what I'm saying? Doing that shit, drill music, anything you see now, it said the the fashion of this world, so nothing go, nothing in this world is going to come into the kingdom, man. This shit got us. This shit gets the Ain't going to be period. no Jordans in the kingdom. Ain't going to be no Jordans hey. in the kingdom, man. Oh, what else y'all mama say? We ain't, we burning all the women's suits. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> women wearing a damn suit. A woman yep. putting on a suit is just because she want to, she want to try to match a man. Right. So I, I can do it too. That's what a woman's suit is. Basically. Bitch, put a dress on. Right, you look better. Damn. Everything here is just a disrespect to the Most High's order. Everything here is a boast, is a boastful act against the Most High. Right. So a love of the Lord is going is going to be vexed here, man. The same way Lot was vexed in, in Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, could be using the world for you know for a living. It's just like a military. Our apartments and our homes are barracks. So we use the world to make our daily bread, help the brotherhood, help for the ministry, take care of your loved ones. You got families and not. But the, but the fashion of this world gonna pass away. None of this shit you doing this seeing now is gonna come in the game. Man. That right. So all, all, all this gonna get burnt up here, according to prophecy, in the third nuclear destruction, man. In the world, in a third world's war. It's like war by my God, one. That's right. That was it on that.